Hello, BookTube. I have a Friday Reads for you. Uh, just a few books that are on my launch pad or that I want to bring to your attention uh, that I will be reading immediately. And I've got six of them, and because it's my Friday Reads, because I'm me, three of them I've read already. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about them anyway because they're very recent reads. So this is, this is, this is a, sort of that kind of a Friday Reads. And the first one I read last night. Uh, it overcame my... <laughs> it overcame my better sense, and I just prioritized it over everything and read it again. And this is The Man in Lower Ten by Mary Roberts Reinhardt. I'm on a huge murder mystery kick in 2020, and I just found this at, at a brattle yesterday, and I, it was just calling to me, and I had a whole bunch of other stuff I had to do. It only took an hour, and I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I forgot, actually, uh, that how much Mary Roberts Reinhardt adds to her murder mysteries as opposed to just telling you the murder. Uh, just setting up the mystery and narrating it. There's lots of character work involved, lots of atmosphere. I forgot about that. And I certainly forgot about it in this book because I haven't, I've only read this book once and it was a long time ago. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Can't wait to get more Mary Roberts Reinhardt. Now, this next one is uh, something that I've already read, but I haven't read this version. This is also from yesterday. This is The Idiot by Dostoevsky. But this is in the Peviar and Volkonsky translation. I just recently reread The Idiot in an English language translation by... Uh, 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 I want to say Constant Garnet, but I don't think it was. Well, anyway, I recently read an older English translation, whereas Pavlyan and Valkonsky are, are uh, the hotshot modern superstar Russian translating duo. And uh, I don't think I've ever read their translation of The Idiot. So this counts as a, a book that I have read, much like the Mary Roberts Reinhardt, but I'll be reading this uh, tonight, tomorrow. Uh, I decided that, I, I, that even though I just read The Idiot in English, I'm going to read this again just to get uh, a sense for the differences between the translations, and also to go over the story, see if, if Peviar and Valkosti bring forward any aspects that I missed uh, in, the, in the translation that I read. Uh, and then this next one is a new book. Uh, this isn't out yet. Uh, we saw it on this channel, I believe. It, this comes out in, uh, on March 3rd. The, the first Tuesday in March is a massive release date for books, and this is one of them. We saw it on this channel, and uh, I read it, and I was tremendously impressed. I loved it. Uh, and it's this, it's Every Drop of Blood uh, by Edward H. Horn uh, about Lincoln's second inaugural, but about much more than that. I mean, the, the famous speech is the linchpin of the book, but it's about much more than that. It's about the, the incredibly contentious atmosphere in which Lincoln ran for re-election in the middle of a civil war and won. And what a lot of people thought about him, it's, it shows you, it's my favorite kind of Lincoln book because there's no hagiography. There's no rose-tinted lens looking back at the slain martyr of freedom. Instead, it's Lincoln as president, seen by his contemporaries, positive and negative, mostly negative. Uh, a vibrant, amazing portrait uh, of not only the man, but the era. I, I just absolutely loved it. So I, those of you who are Lincoln fans, there are probably quite a few of you who are bigger Lincoln fans than I am, uh, and Civil War fans, you have to read this book. Just have to. Uh, so I strongly, strongly recommend it. It will be in your bookstores in early March. And then we'll do uh, three that I haven't read yet. And this first one I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bolt right down. I know I'm going to like it because this author never lets me down. And this is Charles Finch. This is his uh, Charles Lennox Mysteries. This is The Last Passenger. This is the finished copy. And this continues, uh, might even conclude, a batch of books that, uh, that take us to the, the main character. Charles Lennox is a private detective in London. Uh, and in the Victorian era, and this, the, there's been a, a batch of books that take us to his earliest days, because the series itself starts off when he's already an established figure, and these take us back to his earliest days. They show us him learning his craft, meeting some of the key figures in his life, some of the early relationships with some of the key figures in his life. It's, they're really, really good. I wish more established series murder mystery authors would do stuff like this. Pop us around in time with your characters. Not just the beginning of their career, but the end of their career as well. Pop us around in time. It's a fun way to do things. Uh, many, many authors have tried it. it. You won't lose anybody. You won't lose any, any readers. If you're doing your job right, you won't lose any readers. I'm sure that I will love this. Uh, it won't take long to find out, but I'm sure that I will. And I, I, don't, I don't think this has a pub sheet, but I'm pretty sure that this is uh, the end of February. So it's, it's high time that I did. And then we have two uh, that are on my launch pad that won't take any time at all. Uh, the first one is from June. Uh, but I'm going to read it anyway because it looks it looks adorable. It's it's uh, YA. Uh, does this come out in June? Yes, it does. This comes out in June. It's called Bookish and the Beast, and it's from a series called Once Upon a Con. And then you have uh, the Bookish in the library and a dog and the Beast. Uh, 
In 2017, Geekarella charmed young adult readers with its heartfelt and unexpected twist on Cinderella. I've not read Geekarella. Have any of you read Geekarella? This book was named a must-read by USA Today, and author Ashley Poston quickly captured the hearts of fangirls of all ages. In 2019... Poston, also known for her YA science fiction duology Heart of Iron, expanded the world of geeky fairy tales with The Princess and the Fangirl. And now she writes uh, uh, the third installment in the Once Upon a Con universe, Bookish and the Beast. Meet Vance Rains, son of film production royalty, star villain of the upcoming sci-fi blockbuster Starfield Resonance, and Hollywood's favorite bad boy. Vance has it all, money, career, girls, until a scandal involving his co-star causes the tabloids to turn on him. Fearing negative press, Vance is packed off to a small town to lie low. Bored and annoyed, he resentfully spends his days avoiding calls from his mother, taking his dog for walks, and counting the hours until his 18th birthday. Oddly pre-internet, of course he would be found. Somebody at the studio would leak his location and there'd be cameras waiting for him. But you suspend your disbelief. Enter high school senior Rosie Thorne, who wants nothing more than to graduate and escape her boring hometown. One afternoon, after following a lost dog to the empty mansion at the edge of town, a frazzled Rosie comes face to face with her celebrity crush. The cool and off-putting Vance reigns. But this chance encounter does not go well. Rosie accidentally destroys a rare edition of, Starfield, of a Starfield novel and must catalog the house's extensive library to pay off her debt. <laughs> Working in the mansion means close contact with Vance, and though most Starfield fans would jump at the chance, Rosie just has realized one niggling problem. Vance is a jerk. <laughs> she can't stand him, and he wants absolutely nothing to do with her or the sci-fi-filled library. Barbs fly, mistrust builds, but when a thunderstorm traps this unlikely pair in the pool house, each begins to discover there may be more to the other than meets the eye. Little bit disappointing that they're not going to learn that through the library, and all the book people, all the book nerds who read this are going to say, okay, well, great, they're trapped in the pool house. Could you maybe move the narrative to the library and tell us more about the books on the shelves, and we'll just assume they're going to get along? <laughs> I will probably be one of those book nerds, but I'll give it a try. I'll give it a try. It won't take long at all to read. It sounds like fun. Uh, and then the next one is also a late February release. And I, I yeah, February 28th. And I haven't got to it yet. Uh, and it's not going to take long, but it's probably going to not take long in a different way than Bookish and the Beast. Because <laughs> it's it's not a long book, but it's dense with figures. So I, And this is Fear Itself. The Causes and Consequences of Fear in America. And it looks at things that Americans fear, urban crime, political corruption, environmental de destruction, invasion of aliens, what, of illegal aliens or whatnot. It looks at those fears both sociographically by interviewing people and talking about these things with them, but also factually by looking at whether or not those things actually do statistically represent danger to anybody and how much. And I believe the book is going to find what similar studies have found in recent years, which is that there's a wild discrepancy between the two. People, the things people fear, they fear grossly out of proportion to the actual likelihood of danger of those things. I, I, I could be wrong. We'll see. Uh, but I, I let this go way too long. It's not that big, so it, it won't take long at all. Uh, so that's my, that's my uh, Friday reads. We have Fear Itself. We have Bookish and the Beast. We have the new Charles Finch. If you're not reading the Charles Lennox stories, you should just find one. Find anyone at the library. Uh, then Every Drop of Blood. Uh, all about uh, the Lincoln... Winning re-election and embarking on a second term that, that of course, would be cut short. Uh, then The Peviar and Volkonsky Idiot uh, and uh, The Man in Lower Ten by Mary Roberts Reinhardt. The first in what I'm assuming now that I've re-caught the scent is going to be a long reign of reintroductions to Mary Roberts Reinhardt. I'm going to gobble up everything I find by her. I know that I said that I wanted this particular paperback edition, and I do, uh, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to scruple. I, I like. I remember now how much I like her, so I'm. I'm going to read everything, no matter what format it's in. And I'll just. I'll. I'll leave correcting the formats for later on. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. But I'll be back. Thank you, book two.